I'm detecting that it's apparently detective season. This is Fragments of Silicon. Welcome to another installment of Fragments of Silicon. I'm your host, Adam. Joining me as always, our Galax and Petty fan. Let us get to the news. Galax, why don't you start us off this week? I'm guessing you muted again. Probably. Yep, sorry. Our dryer's broken, so that's fun. Um... Mom knows how to fix it, but we're waiting for the part to get in, so we're going to have to use the laundromat at least once this week for drying. Thankfully, the washer still works. Uh, let's see. Uh, trying to track this up on the uh, thing for the uh, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate splat fest this weekend. Which is also... The, there are uh, Pokemon events this weekend too. There's the uh, Valentine's, at, or the 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 return of the unrivaled Greninja, and then the Valentine's raid event in Scarlet Violet. So that'll be interesting. Hopefully, this week we'll get to actually do Pathfinder too. The last couple of weeks we haven't been able to because my DM had a sinus infection. Those are fun. Yep. But I think that's about what I've got. So I'm guessing it's my turn then? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And we almost finished uh, Mac Cross Eternal Love Song with Mac the last Sunday, except for uh, he talked him out of thinking that he had to actually fight the final boss because it's not the character that you think it's supposed to be. Uh, and then the game soft-locked when uh, apparently you have some allies that will just keep heading towards the back of the map, and if they hit the back of the map, uh, it doesn't know what to do. So their turn never ends. So, yeah, we'll have to redo the final battle. Fun. Right? That's actually all. All right, uh, Petty, go. Uh, I was going to say this week was relatively uneventful, and then Sunday night happened. Mm. So my mom has a broken tooth, and apparently it started to abscess. Well, instead of telling anybody about it or even going to a dentist because she now has dental insurance and getting it looked at, she decided to take... Um, pet store antibiotics for it. Well, Sunday night, the pain got so bad she had to go to the ER. And they admitted her for a little over a day, almost two. And um, they didn't do anything to drain the abscess because they want her to go see a dentist. So that's fun. And a real good use of, you know, funds. And so she's basically had about two days off work, and she doesn't have any paid time off, so payday's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, I guess she's, air quotes, fine. Still kind of a moron, though, but that's just me. <laughs> I mean, an abscess tooth? You can die from that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's especially real fucking 
air quotes intelligence because she goes by several walk-in dental clinics on her way to and from work. Mm. That at least one of them had a big old sign that says they take her insurance. So the fault's kind of on her for that one. Because she could have easily gotten it taken care of when it started hurting. Mm. But what do I know? Um, other than that, I think I have my decks ready for the um, Digimon tournament this weekend. So, hooray. Um, I'm probably going to be running um, Machine Dramon. So. The Digimon? Yeah, the Digimon card game. Oh man, I haven't heard of her Digimon in a while. Love yeah, they, that. I love that. I love the show back in the day. They started up a new card game back in 2020, and I've been playing it fairly reg- regularly at a local card shop every Sunday. Cool. I play too, but not very often because the day that the card local card shop plays is a day that I can't be there. Mm. So yeah, hopefully that you know. I ended up winning some stuff with that. And, um... Yeah, I think that's it for me. Other than, my cat's adorable, and she wants to cuddle. So, I guess next victim. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That'd be me. Um, this week, being kind of... De- well, not kind of. Been dealing with a um, leaky faucet which has necessitated the calls to maintenance and some plumber's trips over here, which um, haven't worked as well as I had hoped. And that the sink keeps leaking. I'm going to have to go for round three here soon. Because apparently there's a stoppage now. It's causing a new leak. Oh, fun. Ouch. Terrible. Now, hopefully this will be the last time that um, occurs. Mm. On the upside... My finger is um, doing much, much better this week. Say it's about 95 to 99% healed. Like, just waiting for, like, the new bits of skin with the old bits to fully merge. And it's like... But other than that, like... The infection seems to be well and gone. Oh. And yeah, I think that's about it for my news. Um, so, merrily, we shall roll along to the interview portion of the broadcast. And joining us this week, um, Rue from the River Room returns to our shores. Um, so, how are you doing tonight? Doing awesome, man. It's, uh, you know, I, I have a. Uh... Got a little motion sick earlier playing with some VR, which uh, it was interesting. It was my first experience with it. And uh, yes, why well, I don't play VR. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me a little bit motion sick, and I didn't expect that, but it is what it is. But uh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing good other than that. Okay. So let's see here. I think last time we had you on the program, we ended off with Iliad the Crystal Wars. Ah, um, yes. Um, I think that uh, has that come out yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's already gone into uh, into shipping, and and yeah, I got a full line of uh, of it, uh, but you know, ready to go. It's been selling pretty good. The game is really cool. Honestly, it's a good one. 
Yeah. Like, I think I remember this thing getting um, good reviews when it came out, though I was concerned it got uh, it might have gotten overshadowed by the actual Doom game that came out um, a few months back. Uh, it seems to have done pretty well. I didn't have any, any issues. Yeah, yeah. because uh, we did the Kickstarter and that really kind of uh, boosted everything. And uh, yeah, yeah, after that, the sales have just continued, honestly. It's been really good. Um, were you taken by surprise by that? Or, or, or were you expecting this to do well? Um... I was expecting it to do well, honestly. It's a really, really good game, and you know, I try not to do like uh, publishing deals with games that I don't personally enjoy a lot. And I've kind of gained this uh, trust from, uh, I guess, the community. Uh, so I figured that it would do well. I mean, uh, m- most of the games that I've been releasing lately have been doing pretty good, and. Uh, I had no worries about that one because of what it was. It was, you know, it was originally a Dune game, and and uh, I know a lot of people were really curious about it. Plus, the idea of releasing a game that was never previously released before officially, and giving it its actual first physical run is is a really cool thing to a lot of people. Uh, so, I expected it to do pretty well, and it and it did do well for sure. Well, that's good. And are there any plans to bring Iliad to platforms other than the Game Boy Advance? So the the people who own the actual rights to it have put it onto Steam. So it's a, it's already on uh, like a PC uh, port has already been done. And uh, but other than that, um, I've been trying to get Xbox and Nintendo's approval of of uh, what I'm trying to do and. I'm just waiting on waiting on responses from both the companies, uh, and then I hope to do some work with you know some more modern consoles. But until then, it stays put. Okay, well, which makes sense. Um, have you reached out to Sony yet? Yes, yeah, I have. I actually reached out with the um, uh, with the like a. Uh, Desire to want to publish multiple games of mine, Ellen being one of them for sure. But um, I was gonna really try to shoot for Quest Arrest and Gelatinous first, which are earlier games that I had developed myself um, from the ground up. So yeah, I was I was hoping to get those ones out there. I'm guessing once again uh, the luck hasn't been so hot there. Um, they haven't responded yet. I'm guessing because there's like a grace period. I don't know. Um, I haven't heard anything back from from either company yet. Um, but I've been told that it sometimes it takes time. So I'm just waiting. They they are kind of weary of accepting new publishers, and I came kind of am coming out of nowhere. So we'll see what they say. Indeed. Um. Well, good luck to you. I appreciate it. Okay. Anyway, um, so moving to other products here, um, are, mm-hmm. are the likes of like Chips Challenge or Quest Arrest, um, are they still available for purchase? Yeah, I, I, I was never really a big fan of doing like limited editions or limited runs. Well, I mean, I would do limited editions, but I I always will have the games that I publish available no matter I mean, no matter what, you'll be able to get the game itself. I mean, I might do some special cases or something like that or some limited limited special like uh manuals or something like that, but I always like to keep the games fully available to everybody who wants to to uh buy them. A lot of times I give I give away the ROMs for free. You can always download those and uh play for free. I'm not really um uh, not really into doing this for like a whole like let's get like a whole bunch of profits or let's get gain wealth off of this. It's really like a preservation effort to try to just feed consoles that I love new games uh, and kind of keep them alive for another generation. You know, I have these nephews and uh, 
they're you know, nine, ten years old, and they're they're playing Game Boy games because I'm, uh, you know, producing and releasing Game Boy games. They're playing my games, and it's just cool to see, you know, like a, a Super Nintendo or a Game Boy get get use in this generation, you know, by some kids. So it's really my goal whenever it comes to all of this. Yeah, that reminds me of um, one of my nephews who's turned ten and is really into a shocking amount of classic game characters like Pac-Man and Sonic. Cool. Like, yeah, doesn't actually play the old games mainly because he has limited access to actual games. Hmm. Right. Sounds like you got to hook him up. <laughs> yeah. It's a long story. I won't go into it. I understand. Yeah, yeah, but it's cool to see that 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 new generation kind of accepting some of the stuff that we we loved growing up as well. Hmm. Like, like I'm wondering if they would take to something like Chips Challenge though. Chips like, Challenge is like pretty hardcore as far as like puzzle games, and I have another one that's pretty hardcore called Big to Small. Um, right. They're both they're both like pretty pretty uh, brutal in terms of like difficulty. So um, I think those kind of games are for a specific kind of person, uh, whereas like you know some of the other games might be more of a general audience based. I think those those are a particular taste, you know. I mean, Chips Challenge it can be argued because like the Chips Challenge was originally released for the links like and i think more notably it did appear in one of the microsoft entertainment packs right um, that's where i played it for the first time yeah which is about as casual and broad focus as you could get like back in the 90s right um but uh, yeah so you mentioned big to small which is um one of your new uh releases right uh, so for those who might not know what this is you know what is big too small it's it's a puzzle game that where you play as animals and you basically just try to get the animal to its corresponding food like an elephant wants peanuts or a mouse wants cheese um but you know it looks very cute and the graphics aren't like these super intricate graphics, but the game is hardcore in terms of puzzles. So it's it's for a puzzle enthusiast for sure. If you like Chips Challenge, you'll like Big to Small. Well, is it is another game in the vein of Sokoban? Um, I never played Sokoban, so I'm not Did sure. You ever play the Game Boy game Box? No. Like, well, like. That, that's basically Sokoban and, and Chips Challenge is. Very I think I, I think I know what you're talking about, like a block pushing kind of game, maybe. Yeah. Um, block, block, box. Any game where you uh, have to push um, boxes or blocks or square objects into a certain configuration, and you have to watch for like corners and walls. It's it's similar to that, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's kind of like I I saw somebody comparing it to Goof Troop on the Super Nintendo, um, but yeah, it's 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 a it's it's a puzzle, a pretty hardcore puzzle game, and it get, gets really really hard really fast. So if if that's something that you know you're into, then like I said, it's a particular taste. Some some people really hate those kinds of games or get frustrated easily. Uh, others really absolutely love them. So. I think Chip's yeah. Challenge gains like a pretty high difficulty pretty quickly too. Mm-hmm. Like um certainly not an easy game beyond yeah. the first few stages. Right. Yep. Right. Uh it's like the, yeah, they can get um very complicated. Right. And and uh, so, does this game add any particular flavorings to that chip challenge formula? You know, I I think it's quite different from Chips Challenge because Chips Challenge, um, 
you you play as if like you're on like like whenever you play old games whenever you slide on ice you know how like uh or in the chip challenge levels or chip challenge games you know how like you you uh you 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 slide on ice and you hit a platform and you press down and you slide on ice and you hit another platform it plays like that but the whole game is that way so yeah. you have you have to kind of pre- predetermine your your uh, paths you know yeah i know what you're talking about i've been this, this level that petty is currently on is one of the first absolutely bullshit that you're expected to do all of this in one level levels <laughs> and there's plenty uh, of those yeah i'm like <laughs> Uh, like I've encountered those kind of puzzles in um, Zelda games, or um, the It'll Do series comes to mind as well. Mm-hmm. I think luckily Zelda's a bit more tame, though. I mean, I think it's a it's better it's better for a more general audience. Some hey, some of those puzzles ow. can get <laughs> yeah. Zelda Zelda puzzles. Okay, so the hard part about a lot of the chips challenge things is that the levels get quite long. And there generally aren't checkpoints, so you yeah. have to deal with. Yeah, you you get... <laughs> it, it's a long chain of execution where you have to get everything right. Yeah, if you mess you have up, to start and over entirely. Start all over. Yeah, <laughs> brutal, super brutal. I created a a platformer game called Gelatinous, and we we tried to create the uh, difficulty to be really high on that too, but it's it's just a different style of game but it's kind of like that in the same situation where you have to get through some obstacles and if you make one mistake then back to the checkpoint and and it really like frustrated me whenever i was doing testing because it was pretty hardcore and i'm not really that good of a gamer i'm not really that like talented whenever it comes to gaming i see a lot of people who are really good at games and i'm just not uh so it was interesting to try to create something like that was even hard for me Mm. And now, you forgot to pick big, up the yellow yeah. key. Now, is Big to Small something you programmed, or is it another retro game that you found in somewhere? So this is a it, it's a game uh, programmed by a guy named Matthew Steele, and he's not online, and he just isn't on social media or anything like that. And he came to me and and uh, he said, "Hey, I want to publish my Game Boy game," and I was like, "Okay, cool." Um, so we got to talking and working together, and I was like, "Hey, man, I think it'd be a, a cool idea if we spread this across different platforms." So, created a Nintendo 64 version, created a Dreamcast version, working on a PC version of the game. Uh, so I just kind of uh, opened it, opened it up, and and gave it to an audience. And he really was just looking for people to play his game. And I was like, oh man, well, we'll get people to play your game. We'll get some money in your pocket. And, and, um, yeah, it's just, we made history since then. I mean, we just got a shout out from, uh, Metal Jesus Rocks this last week. And mm. I think his video is at 80,000 views or something like that. And so <laughs> I think his, uh, dreams of getting his game seen and played have, have been, uh, happening. So I'm, I'm really happy for that. Mm. I, uh, so how did you land on the Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast's platforms of choice? Um, just the realm of possibility. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll work with any platform that I can. The thing that sucks about working with some CD-based platforms like Sega Saturn or the PlayStation One is that the uh, the discs that the copyright protection system is like really hardcore. So it's easier to create games for. The Dreamcast, because there's no copyright system, and uh, I mean there uh, they, is, but it's been long since broken. <laughs> y- yeah, you can play like you can a lot of times uh, with certain models of the Dreamcast. You can burn just regular CDs, you know, like blanks, you know, blanks of the games, and play it on your Dreamcast with no sort of modification to the system. So uh, it makes it easier to, to develop homebrew stuff um, for for consoles that don't try to argue with you. You know. Right. And I mean more like the N64 and the Dreamcast versus, say, bringing this to Genesis or Super Nintendo. I would love to bring it to the Super Nintendo or the Genesis. Um, I think the problem with that is that 
uh, I would have to develop from the ground up and instead of the ways that I've done it, which we, we use like um, emulation or, you know, uh, uh, wrapping it in, 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 into an emulator to be able to play it on these other systems. We'd have to develop from the ground up because the Super Nintendo is incapable of emulating Game Boy games. So I think that's 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 a one big reason why we decided to do that. I mean, I guess in fairness, you can play this on a Super Nintendo if you have a Super Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. Wrong page. Um, right. So, another, I think, um... Right. Uh, so I think I saw, you know, your company in the news not too long ago over this one, and that's Airball. Ah. I'm like, and I, I do have to preface this. Um, Airball is a strange name for this kind of title because whatever you're thinking Airball is, it isn't that. <laughs> is it a ball of air? I'm like... It sure is. <laughs> it is, but you know, you probably be thinking it in the context of, say, maybe a breakout clone, or this is a volleyball game, or maybe Marble Madness alike. You know, something like that. I'm like, and no, Airball is none of those. This is an isometric uh, action puzzle platformer. Um, like that head over heel games uh, game we reviewed not too long ago, um, or some you know something else that was really popular on say like the ZX Spectrum or the Commodore sixty four. Although I think in this case this was like uh, an Atari ST game. Uh, yeah, these versions of Airball that I released were also previously canceled, so. <laughs> Um, that's that's another one of those those uh, those games that never got its uh, time to shine, and we were able to give it, you know, give it the uh, publicity that it deserves. Uh, finally, you know, twenty five thirty years later. Right, and well, I suppose the question that uh, first comes to mind is, how did you come across um, these uh, particular versions for the NES and Game Boy Advance? Well. Um, I think both of them are are widely available on the internet. You can you can kind of search for them. Um, but one of the companies that I I work with specifically uh, a company called Ock, um, they own the uh, in intellectual property rights for Airball in general. Uh, and I and it was released on the Amiga and I think that maybe the Commodore sixty four, and. Uh, it was being developed by other companies for other platforms and ended up being canceled. So they bought the rights uh, to to the uh, games after that happened, and uh, they had offered it to me, and I just said absolutely. Okay. Um, so given that uh, tale, were these versions more or less complete? Yeah. Yeah, they were, um, which is a shame. Uh, I mean, it seems to happen a lot whenever these companies will be finished or almost finished with a game and um, they just get shit canned because of like bureaucracy or whatever, like, you know, a company goes bankrupt or whatever. And, uh, you know, the developers, whereas they got paid because they're on a salary or whatever, they don't get to see their game get the uh, the light that it deserves. And that, that kind of sucks to me. Yes, I suppose that is unfortunate. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, in comparing these two versions of Airball to, you know, like the 16-bit or, you know, you know the, the versions that came out back in the day, are there any significant changes or differences? There's a lot of graphical differences, and there's differences between the two versions. The NES and the GBA versions are uh, uh, vastly different. Uh, there's different uh, goals as far as like where you find certain items. Um, I, I, in the NES version, you actually have a life bar, whereas in the GBA version, 
it's one hit kills. <laughs> so there's some yeah. slight there's some slight differences between the two versions for sure. Um, they're both they both play relatively similar, but um, you're gonna get a different experience out of out of each of them because of those those uh, subtle differences. Yeah, that's about what I would have expected. Um, in both cases, you know, like uh, because well, the NES they would have had to have adapted that to the platform. Um, because the NES is not as powerful as, say, the Amiga. Right. And the Game Boy Advance, well, probably could have done the original game. I'm like, and I suppose that's another question. Like, is the DBA version of Airball, like, the same as the Atari ST or the Amiga version of Airball? They're different, definitely. They try to, uh, yeah. they try to, they try to emulate each other for sure. Uh, you know the graphics are, are re- really where the differences lie. I think um, you, you know there's yeah, a lot but, of yeah. That that's another thing that would have occurred for something that would have come out for you know like GBA or you know a at the time modern platform. You would have seen modernizations of yeah. that game um, depending on circumstances. Like sometimes. Right. You know, they just port the Super NES game over, but other times they would have tried to make it look more contemporary. Um, yeah, you see it like in the Donkey Kong Country ports for the Game right. Boy and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's a similar situation. You're going to get a, a similar experience, you know, out of playing Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy as you will on the Super Nintendo. Obviously, the graphics are better on the Super Nintendo, but you're still going to have a really good time uh, with the Game Boy version of it. They did a good job porting it, I think. And I feel the same way about these ports. They're they're really well done. Yeah, I'm like... Um, is it known why these particular versions of Airball were cancelled, or is that just something that's been scattered to the winds? I'm pretty sure the companies went bankrupt. That's usually what happens, you know, uh, uh, game companies will be working on, you know, like a number of titles and, you know, uh, they'll just go bankrupt in the middle of their development run and it sucks to see it. That would do it. Um, Yeah, sucks. Yeah, I mean, there are sometimes factors that just aren't known, but um, sometimes they are. Um, and, uh, are you, uh, like, ha- are there any other, um, versions of Airball that have fallen through the cracks over the years that you might have access to? Not that I know of, but, um, maybe, I, I don't think so. Not that I know of. I would love to have the opportunity to, uh, uh, recreate it for again like the super nintendo or or uh other other consoles but uh, I, I don't know of anybody who has done it before like well that's going into a whole different area than what we're talking about here you know that yeah. that's you know that's going into like actual you know, porting and developing um this game for different systems right which i'm um, like you know, maybe a thing you could uh, do, given that you sure. know the company that actually owns the intellectual property, yeah. but, you know, would also be a lot more work. Right. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's not always worth the work, you know, but, uh, mm. but yeah, you know, and I have all the assets and stuff, so it, that helps a lot. I wouldn't have to rip out all the assets or recreate them. I, I have them already. You know, I already have the source code for other for it being put on other systems. So, um, right. You know, it 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 would be nice to to have if I had unlimited resources, I would definitely do that kind of stuff. Yes, uh, but 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 uh, you know, there's only so much you can do in a day, and yeah, that's what sucks so about much. business. Money always gets involved, and I, I hate how I hate when money is involved in things. You know, it just ruins everything. I mean, 
the, uh, there is a nonprofit side to game preservation these days, thankfully. Like, yeah. you know, things like uh, archive.org or the Video Game History Museum. But I'm like, and I suppose the perils of business couldn't be helped given that, you know, you're actually like doing physical versions of these games. Right. No. Um, I wish that it, you know, I wish this was just something that I could do all the time and not have to worry about money. I could just work on development or porting, porting games or. Yeah. I just wish it was something that I could do without the business aspects sometimes. I mean. It is the a wish. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast, I guess. To a certain extent, yes, it is. Like, uh, and uh, let me see here. So, I don't think we've talked about Magic and Legend Time Knights yet. Oh, yeah. Like, I like. So what's this game? So, Magic and Legend Time Knights is a a game that uh, a friend of mine had produced about. That he was he was riding alongside his two kids, and uh, he he wanted to make his two kids like these superheroes. And each magic and legend are characters in the game, and they both represent uh, his his children. And they both have different powers. Like one of them is more of a melee fighter; the other one is more of like a distance fighter. Like uh, you know, uh, so yeah, it's it's an action platformer. Uh, it's a really cool game. It's a lot of fun. Again, like I said, whenever I do publishing, I I always try to mess with games that I I think are fun. And uh, yeah, I like to work with people who are cool. And he, you know, the developer is really cool. And uh, yeah, it's it's a good one. It's another good one. It's it's not quite uh, out the oven yet, so to speak. I'm still working on trying to get the publishing done on it. But we're just right. We're right there. We're super close to having it done. Actually, the manufacturers had messed some stuff up, so I would have been at a point to where I was finished if if that never happened. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Like, so, who do you use in terms of cartridge manufacturing? So, it, it's t- multiple different companies because I have to get the shells created at one, and then I get the PCBs created at another. And I get the boxes created at another, and I get the manuals created at another, and I get stickers and pins created at another. So it's it, there's not a consistent manufacturer for any of it. I have to work with several people. CD-based games, completely different manufacturers. So I'm working with like multiple teams of people to try to get these done. I also have an artist that I work with. His name's Elmo. He's the one who, who designs pretty much uh, everything that I've worked on. He goes by the... Uh, the uh, uh, name Budget Nostalgia on social media, so you might have seen him around. Uh, super cool guy. Um, mm. And yeah, so there's just like not one single producer of, of, of it. It's just like a whole mess of people that I have to work with to get it all done. I think more to the point, um, do you do any of the assemblage yourself, or do you have another entity yeah, yeah. Do that for you? I assemble all of it by myself. I'm the only person who does it. It's 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 really wild. <laughs> it actually sucks, kind of. It takes up more time than I'd like it to. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just say you're not the only retro developer we know. And um, we spoke to one of those types not too long ago who had a pretty big order of NES cards that they had to hand assemble in. Oh. Their hands were regretting it after the ordeal. I, I mean, this is what I do. So it's 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 an it, before I came on here, I was assembling stuff, and not only do I assemble stuff, but I ship and I, you know I package and ship everything. So you know I'm sitting here like printing labels and you know p- p- taking everything and putting it in you know putting it in the uh, pers- respective boxes and shipping it to all these different places, and it's just a constant grind. Well, at the same time, like trying to find new stuff to work with, and you know, trying to uh, develop games myself, you know, it's it's a lot of work. 
Again, if money if money wasn't an issue, man, if I didn't have to pay rent in my life, then you know I would do this stuff all day, all the time. You know, I would just I would I would be developing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yep. But there are always the you know costs of doing business. Yeah. Like yeah, absolutely. And. Anyway, uh, moving past that, is there anything else that you're working on presently that you haven't put up on your website yet? Oh, absolutely. I have I have about 10 projects that are open right now. Uh, two of them that I'm developing myself and uh, about eight of them that are developed by other people. Uh, one of them I can talk about is, is a Dreamcast game that I'm working on. It's called Blood Rush. It's a like a beat 'em up style zombie game for the Dreamcast, where you can play with uh, co op with four different p- uh, players, and you just freaking beat the crap out of some zombies. Um, it's kind of in 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 development. I've slowed down since my daughter was born, um, but yeah, it's it's slowly making progress, and it's a really cool game. It's 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 coming together really good. There's a bunch of areas to explore. It's an open world. Um, like I said, you could play with with uh, four people, four players at once on the screen, couch co-op. Um, but yeah, that's 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 one of the ones that I'm developing. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of other projects like preservation projects that I'm working on, and uh, yeah, it's just stuff that I can't can't talk about necessarily. But but I have a lot a lot of stuff in the canon, so to speak. Okay, um, and what about? In terms of the retro scene, anything that you can talk about currently? All all of this stuff is the uh, is the retro scene stuff. Um, I mean, I guess. Um, uh, let me rephrase that. Yeah. More retro any, subjective. <laughs> well, it's like more any more found, lost retro relics. You know. Yes. Any, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The, um, I'm working on a. Uh, a couple of CDI games that were lost in oblivion and uh trying to get them you know the re- the the release for the first time uh that's going to be probably the next thing that I announce I guess I like wow the CDI I'm mm-hmm. like <laughs> yeah I'm like uh, I recently I bought one I I do not have good opinions on the cdi i i actually knew somebody who had one and yeah that was not a good system you know there's there's several uh, uh, very few times that i get to uh enjoy a, a, an old system for the first time and i recently got to do it with the 3do and the cdi and i gotta say man i've i've actually enjoyed playing with both consoles like uh you know, there's better there's better consoles if you're gonna buy if if you're putting it next to a Sega Saturn or something like that. Sure, the Saturn's gonna slap harder for sure. But I really enjoyed the CDI and I really enjoyed the 3DO. And you know, while while I I understand the hate that they got next to things like the PlayStation or you know these other consoles, um, I I still think they're pretty fun to play with. Like that might depend on the uh, on the conditions because from what i've been hearing like cdis have not been um doing well as of late like you know the they're on the upper end of the bill their build quality yeah like Um, belts and stuff are starting to fail and chips and uh, caps and yeah i'm like and i and i imagine the 3do is my is probably facing the same fate because we are talking about CD-based systems, so there are a lot more in the way of moving parts than, you know, an NES or Super NES or Genesis. Um, and, yeah, you know, broken disc trays, you know, just all that kind of stuff is befalling. Laser you know, problems. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's doubly uh, a problem with things like the 3DO and CDI because you know those were not popular right. and thus you know 
the capacity to fix those kinds of systems is a lot more limited than, you know, a broken Genesis. Or what ha- right. I, mean, I could get a new belt like- for my PS1 in a matter of days. Finding one for a CDI is, oh no. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm like, um, Plus, yeah, the less popular the system was to start with, the harder it's going to be to... Uh, yeah. I think the CDI used proprietary drive belts, like non-standard length, so good luck. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's like, it's tough, for sure. Yeah, it's like, even a, something as ancient as the Atari 2600 is a, an easier fix, from what I understand. You know, that that's just from rarity and scarcity and propriety... Uh, down to anything else. Yeah, it sucks to see that, that the drives fail for sure. That's usually the first thing that's going to go on them. Yeah, and like, like they're not even air quotes wanted enough to have like solid state alternatives made up. Right. Yeah. Like, and you know, it's like it's also a concern uh, via the emulation scene. Um. Like, I think, like, I don't know the state of the emulation for, the, like, the 3DO or the CDI, but, you know, they're probably not going to be as robust as more popular systems, although that can uh, absolutely depend on the system. Like, you know, even to this day, Sega Saturn emulation isn't too hot, just because yeah. of how that system was designed. Um, right. Yeah. So, I love those. I love obscure systems, man. I really do. I don't know why, but I, I really love the all three of those systems: Sega Saturn, the 3DO, and the CDI. I have I have really. I never got to play them as a kid, and I bought them within the last like three years. All three of those consoles, and they they were all so much fun to play with. I mean, there can be a certain excitement to it. Um, though, like with the CDI, it's absolutely dependent on the game you play because yeah. I can tell you there is no joy in those Zelda CDI games. I mean, uh, people uh, have been uh, trying to preserve them just for the memes, but that's about well, it. I, I think, well, yeah, I think those games have been actually preserved because, you know, those are based off of proper um, Nintendo franchises as, you know, even as bastardized as they are, you know, if you know what the CDI, if you ever encountered the word CDI, you probably think of those games. Well, and by all rights, they shouldn't exist. But if one's yeah. a fluke business deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they do exist. And they're part of the, they are part of the Nintendo legacy, no matter how much Nintendo wants to deny it. <laughs> they want to bury that hard. They can never. But yeah, you know, I'm talking more about um, a lot of the more not notable or less notable uh, CDI titles, like that uh, version of Tetris we talked about that one time, mm-hmm. um, or you know the uh, their version of the Groilers Encyclopedia, which was like the pack-in title. Like, yep. it's a, interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, that, back in the day, to big... have an encyclopedia be your pack-in. Well, that's it's what weird. the CDI. That, that's what the CDI was literally sold on. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah, the the yeah. CDI being a games platform was like the second or third, yeah, uh, intended use of it. Yeah, right. It, it was so much more sold on um, things like Encarta. Or those living books uh, series, um, like uh, Arthur and stuff like that, v- you know, versus like actual video games. But you know, actual video games did show up on the s- system. But it's just you also got things like Robert Maplethorpe uh, and the Joy of Sex. These are real right. Things out for the CDI. Um, anyway, um, so anything else in this vein that you can talk about? Um, I'm going to try to dip into doing some uh, VHS and DVD publishing. Say that. 
Oh man. Interesting. Like that's usually the domain of the laser disc game. Um, and things that are resembling laser disc games. You know, Space Ace and Dragon's Lair. Um in fact, I think those games did come out on DVD. Um, I, either that or the full motion video set, you know, stuff like Mad Dog Free or yeah, I love I love yeah. FMV. I love cheesy FMV games. They're they're awesome. I know, like Limited Run Games has been trying to keep that port alive. You know, but there, there, there's certainly other. Um, Full motion video games that have yet to be preserved. Uh, right. Like uh, Tomcat Alley uh, hasn't seen that yet. Or the East, you know, or the video game version of Johnny Mnemonic. Yes, that is a real thing that exists. If I could get some, you know, if I can get Nintendo and, you know, Xbox to work with me, then I think we, we might see some more of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, good luck to you on that. Appreciate it. Hopefully it works. All right. So I'm going to see uh, if my colleagues here have any further questions for you. Cool. I think, uh, I I'm, think good. I'm good. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, all right, then. Uh, so, Rue, it was wonderful having you on the program once again. And yeah, I appreciate you guys having me again, for sure. Always yeah. happy to chat. Indeed, and probably have you on again. Uh, you know, when a few more of these other projects uh, get, at the very least, uh, you know, more formally announced, so we can actually talk about them instead of talking around them. Like right. Anyway, in the meantime, um, if you want to pick up any of these games, you can go to the retro room games.com and place an order there. Um, and yeah, um, Petty, play us in the next segment. Welcome to the topic of discussion. So this week, um, well, we had to scrap our actual topic uh, for the Nintendo Direct that aired as of this broadcast slash recording just a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. um, because that's how Nintendo rolls. If you knew about it in advance, it wouldn't be Nintendo. Not these days. You know, they just, you know... On a Tuesday, they like they surprise will... motherfuckers. Yeah, you know, they will announce a Nintendo Direct for the next day. You know, literally how that happened. And I guess less time for people to be tweeting threats at them. That if if the uh, direct doesn't include something that they already know whether or not it's going to include, because they get done beforehand. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Um, so. There's quite a bit to unpack with this Nintendo Direct, but I do want to address one thing. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of chatter about the lack of new announcements from Nintendo in this. And that's by design. Um, guys, did you miss the part where Nintendo said that this was going to be about their spring to summerish lineup? Here. Yeah. Basically, they're, what they're releasing in the first half of the year. They always do this. Like, they they're always like one of the few on... video game companies that still do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably because they got burned on announcing things too soon. Mm -hmm. Though I will grant you that there is an extra layer of concern because, um, you know, what the rumor mill has been churning out, and that is like Nintendo is lacking in big release ticket items after um Tears of the Kingdom. Like, but here's the thing that's just a rumor, you know. 
uh, there is no way right now to confirm yeah. that. If, if it is true, even if it is true, they weren't going. They weren't going to, or even if it isn't true, they weren't going to try to re- even try to refute it here. Yeah, um, and it's also a question of how deep this rumor goes because it, maybe we are talking about Nintendo Sport teams, but that might not preclude. Um, Nintendo's affiliates and allies, as in, you know, they could have another Mario Sports title coming in in the fall, just to cite one example. Um, mm-hmm. And, what, you know, what, whatever else. And plus, there is one more known title that has not been shown off uh, in any capacity, and that is Metroid Prime 4. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there is a possibility that has been moved to um, whatever successor Nintendo is working on to the Nintendo Switch, but as far as we know, Metroid Prime 4 still exists, is still in development, and is still coming out for the Nintendo Switch. But that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, So, in terms of this Nintendo Direct, I think I can sum it up in a word. And that word is remaster. A lot of those this time around. Also a pretty good amount of DLC stuff. but Yeah, yeah. Like, if you want to know what Nintendo is actively working on, a lot of DLC. A lot. Um, which is one way Nintendo has um, reached modernity, let's say. Um, because, yes, yeah, Splatoon 3 came out, but if you thought that wasn't going to get a significant amount of DLC, um, you know, an expansion pass, as they well, call they it. Well, they said that was going to when they announced it. Well, I mean, I know, but, you know, people are whining about new things. Like, the main thing is that the first wave of the DLC in the Splatoon 3 thing is a little bit meh. It doesn't seem to do much functional. It's yeah. just a nice aesthetic thing. But the major story DLC for the second wave looks very interesting. Well, I guess it yeah, also depends I'm... how that's set up. If it's, you know, you have to pay for both waves individually, that's kind of fucked. But if that's you know, the standard of how they do it, though. I know, but like, so from what we've told the um first wave the Inkopolis thing is literally just a skin for the hub it does nothing else so five dollars for that's a little kind of meh and that honestly should just be a free upgrade type thing yeah but that's just my personal opinion i mean there's still a chance that could happen um via the nintendo switch online stuff Maybe they um, did put Octo expansion in the Switch Online expansion pass, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. Like they did not announce that now, but they may announce it. Yeah, later. In the future. Like, but yeah, um, Fire Emblem. Um, what is it? Uh, Engage. Engage. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, that got its first DLC announced. Um. In the form Mark of Street. most, in the form of, yeah, another story chapter later, and sooner than that, a bunch of relatively popular characters uh, to be added to the list of previous Fire Emblem characters that you can wear jewelry that gives you the powers of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Three is continuing on with its expansion pass. Um, Kind of behind on that game in terms of, yeah. As is Mario uh, Kart Eight Deluxe, um, and I suppose uh, like there's another major card that Nintendo has yet to play, um, Mario Kart Nine. Well, they're still doing eight. Yeah, I know, I know, but they could do a Mario Kart Nine for uh-huh. the Switch, mm-hmm. like. I'm talking about, like, you know, for the fall. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, um, so the headliners this time around were um, 
un, you know, what began the show was Pikmin 4. Mm-hmm. I'm like, which was announced at, I think, the previous Nintendo Direct. But, it, it yeah, was but we have some actual footage this time. Yeah. It's it, it's interesting they are, with the improved graphical power compared to the fucking GameCube, uh, there's a lot more um, visibility uh, and of what the modern, like... Because Pikmin is on, like, Earth. Yeah. But you're tiny. In well, the previous games, it was always a little bit, aside from the artifacts... It was always a little bit. Uh, I guess that's a box or something. Now there's some very much more. And then in the dungeons in Pikmin Two, there were a lot of random artifacts, but they were also not very realistically laid out. Whereas here, there's stuff that's like this is clearly used to be a playground. Yeah, there were literally houses. Uh huh. Which kind of leads to some questions about exactly how ruined this world is. Yeah. Why? Well, and yeah, also, sir. Ice Pikmin is interesting. Now we have a way of fucking... Between the Ice Pikmin and the whatever that friggin' Doggo. Bulb Dog thing is, uh, we have ways of getting Pikmin that are not blue across water, which uh, has previously been a bit of a headache, I understand, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Uh, it got a release date of... June 21st, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't think uh-huh. anybody was expecting that soon. I mean, soon is relative here. It's the uh, you know, it, it's the thing that's um, bringing close Nintendo's uh, for uh, you know, um, front end of the year lineup. Uh, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be the um, holiday game. Yeah, I'm not surprised that it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, because look, uh, it's certainly not. Look, Pikmin is not an anchor title. Um, never has been. Well, there were rumors floating be. around that um Zelda was Zelda was getting delayed again, and um, yeah, still, still yeah. nothing on Prime Four. So that was people were expecting that to be their end of the year title, mm, which is fair. Um, but yeah, um, The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. Did get its second trailer, um, and holy shit! With that, some that very interesting, state. but very with some very interesting but very brief visuals, including sightings of what is probably a redead and what is probably a red gliok, mm. uh, right. and yeah, a whole lot of stuff to speculate over, but very little concrete information except for that it is not delayed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the thing that's um, you know. At least from what I've seen on social media, um, what I could see on social media right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess for context, is, for people who find this later, Twitter was broken for most of today. Yeah, right during the Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Um, but um, the, the thing that really caught people's eyes was the uh, was the vehicle. Um, oh, yeah, the... the um... There were three vehicles, one land vehicle and two different air vehicles, I think, and two of those looked very constructed. I'm, yeah, I'm surprised at the amount of people who remember Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts, quite frankly. (laughs) I remember, but that's more PTSD-induced flashbacks. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But I suppose let's get to the big um, rabble, rabble, rabble around uh, Tears of the Kingdom, and that is not announced in the trailer, but since the game has gone up for pre-order and distinctly leaked in advance, um, the new Zelda game is going to be $70. Like, apparently yeah. Nintendo has claimed that is this, this is... great? No. Is this surprising? Not really. Um... And I saw somebody uh, somebody ask why you know why game companies don't charge one hundred dollars for have. yeah, and I'm like I had to tell this person that's what we call collector's editions. Yeah, because Nintendo has a collector's edition for Tears of the Kingdom that's retailing for one thirty nine, you know one hundred and forty dollars. 
literally double. It looks price. good enough that I might still want to get it. <laughs> Insert joke about it actually having the game with it looks over at Ubisoft. It, it does, yes, but I, I understand that that is something of a joke because sometimes it happens that they don't. Looks at Ubisoft. <laughs> That is understandable. Mm. Yeah, uh, certainly understandable indeed. Um, but yeah, so there was quite a bit of third party content uh, in this announcement. But Fucking like Samba de Amigo has been rose from its grave. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wow, Sega remembered that they had. Uh, that they made uh, a few Samba de Amigo games. Like, uh, I mean, it didn't really work on the uh, on the Wii, but I guess, you know, they're going to give it another go. I mean, it worked enough. But I wouldn't um, say it was the best possible yeah. use of, you know, the Wii's hardware, but... Mm-hmm. Fair. But um, also... Um, from the N- Nintendo camp. Um, so the big shadow drop this time around was the Metroid Prime Remaster. Mm-hmm. Re- Metroid Prime One, not Trilogy, yeah. which leads some people to go where two and three. Hopefully, coming not too much later. Mm-hmm. That's a distinct possibility, but you know, it's like I can understand why. I can actually understand why um, Nintendo didn't want to drop the trilogy, it's because um, they can sell each individual piece for $40. Mm-hmm. Like, and then um, maybe make a bundle for slightly less once people have bought all three of them. Yeah. And yeah, Metroid Prime, the remaster, is out now. Like, And from I, what I've heard, performance is actually pretty damn good. I'm like, I'm not exactly sure who's behind this remastering, could be retro themselves. Retro has be... at least posted some, like mentioning, "Hey, this is a thing," but nothing else since. We don't know if it's their yeah. port or if it's just got their blessing. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we don't know if this was handled by, say, Rizzo or um, Tose. You know, like insert company here. I'm like, though, I'm pretty sure it's not. You know. Um, a random Western developer, like, you know, they probably didn't use D- uh, D3T or Iron Galaxy, you know, this, um, something like that. Tartarus, maybe. Uh, Tantalus. Tantalus, yes. Yeah. Um, like, um, I'm looking at the um, store page right now online to see if they have a dev mentioned. But, yeah, anyway, like I said, um, Plenty of re- remasters announced. Um, some had been rumored, like um, Bots and Kaitos 1 and 2 HD remaster. Um, I know this one had been rumored uh, recently, and indeed, like, g- uh, like got to admit, uh, I am a bit surprised that Bots and Kaitos got reemerged before Xenosaga. You know. The whole now now the whole world can be reintroduced to the concept of shampoo percent. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I'm like, it is a bit odd that they're calling this Batos uh, and Kaitos one and two. I'm like, I guess that's technically technically correct, but Baton Kaitos two or Baton Kaitos Origins was a prequel? Like but I guess it's technically correct. <laughs> um, also from Bandai Namco, we got We Love Katamari Reroll Royal uh, Reverie. I'm like, and I'm like, stay that frame rate. <laughs> the actual fuck. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting the PC version because, it, yeah, it's coming to PC. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's another thing. A lot of these are not actually Switch exclusives, but were announced for Switch first. Yeah. Yeah. Ozen Kaitos 1 and 2 HD, as far as I can tell, is. Um, because I did look at the Bandai Namco 
uh, web uh, YouTube channel, and they did have their um, version. Yeah, yeah, here's the thing, um, and it's always been a complaint to mine, but I, you know, it's always going to happen. You know, when multi-platform games get announced in a um, company-specific uh, event, it's always going to have that company's uh, systems and only that company's systems. So, like for example, you know, uh, the We Love Katamari Reroll, yeah, that is coming to all platforms. Or another one that's got announced here, Ghost Trick, which I don't think anyone um, was uh, seeing coming. That was um, on exactly zero people's bingo cards. Is that yeah? And brought it's, back? it's good that it's there though, because Ghost Trick is a very good game and does not work yeah. in any non-game context, like at all. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, Ghost Trick is coming to all platforms. Hell, even uh, the Etrian Odyssey Origins uh, bundle, which is going to be the first three Etrian Odyssey games, that's coming to Switch and Steam. I saw someone point out that the Etrian Odyssey games might suffer somewhat from not having a second screen for the, you know, mapping you gotta do. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because, yeah, the Etrian Odyssey games... They're definitely among the Nintendo DS slash 3DS games that really took advantage of the platform they were on. Mm-hmm. And it's we may be looking at another the world ends with you situation where it's like no matter how much tweaking, how much porting, how much you adjust that game, you're just never gonna Yeah, make unless it you have it. unless you unless you have uh a physical separated screen and a hinge, it's not going to work as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, the world ends with you was just made for the DX, and there was no getting around that. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, in Nintendo Switch Online news, um, well, yeah, a big rollout this time around as they've announced Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. Although, technically speaking, the entire Game Boy line, it's just Nintendo has always considered the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, uh, two ends of the same branch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they're, they're, they're considered... Ba- well, the Game Boy Color had very few actually unique games on it. That's not true. It, it, like, in the sense that it had a lot more unique games than... Uh, the new Nintendo 3DS. Okay, um, fair. But th- that's not what we're talking about here. Nintendo, like, we're talking about what Nintendo perceives, not what, say, Scott the Laws perceives. You know, Scott, you know, Scott can say, you know, these are separate systems all day long. But in Nintendo's eyes, they are not. Nintendo groups Game Boy, Game Boy Color together. And this is no exception. Uh, to wit, the announcement for Game Boy titles was uh, actually a mix of Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Um, which is why, and like, just seemingly picked at random a bit. Kind of, because, yeah. uh, because, like, you know, what they showed off was Super Mario Land 2, but not Super Mario Land 1. In fairness, Super Mario Land 2 is a much better game than Super Mario Land 1. Right. Or for the representative uh, of the Wario Land series. Uh, they chose Wario Land 3. Like, That's a little you... bit more puzzling, because while it is a more developed and... Yeah. You know... Yeah, it's like... Advanced game, I guess. The other ones were perfectly functional, and also, there are two games between Super Mario Land 2 and Wario Land 3, I believe. Yes. The first two Wario lands, like, or like, 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 uh, they picked uh, Game and Watch Gallery three. I know, but I think I'm seeing the pattern here. It's like Nintendo decided to pick the latest or last one of the series that got released on the platform, at least in terms of. Um, but then on the other side of the equation, they picked. Link's Awakening DX instead of the Oracle games. 
Now the Oracle, Oracle games were in the coming soon, though. Yeah, yeah uh, they yeah they did have, and uh, they did have the first Return to Dreamland, not the second. Like, uh, so it is completely arbitrary. Whatever uh, you know, it's like whatever Nintendo chose. Um, and yeah, let's see. Uh, they also had the Pokemon trading card game, and Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. The coming soon section. Uh, Tilt and Tumble will be interesting because that is a motion controls Game Boy game. Yeah. I'm like, uh, they also had a couple of third party. Um, they chose Gargoyle's Quest, which, uh, you know, good choice. A uh, bit of an underdog. Yeah, it's, it's, no, good game, little obscure. Yeah. Um, and Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare for the Game Boy Color. That is just... Why? I didn't even know that was a thing, and I've heard from people that it was not a particularly good thing. No. Um, but it looked nice. That, that's kind of what it was sold on back in the day. It's like, look, it's Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare, kind of on the Game Boy. Yeah, uh, You can continue. I'll be right back. I have to run to the hard. bathroom. All right. But, um, yeah. And, you know, people were already complaining that, oh, you know, where's the GBA? Turns out it was <laughs> literally right behind the Game Boy stuff. Like, and, yeah. Um, so, a bit of a caveat on the Game Boy Advance. And that is, that is a Nintendo Switch Online expansion pass. Um, yeah. So, unless you're, uh, unless on, unless you're paying for the high tier, you're not getting access to the Game Boy Advance, which is honestly not that surprising. It's not surprising, but it's still the same kind of unfortunate. Like, it is good, at least they didn't make all Game Boy stuff expansion pass exclusive, because that would have probably caused a riot. No, I think that would have just caused apathy. Like, maybe, um, yeah. Le- like, you know, it's the same reason why they didn't do that with the NES, Super NES stuff. It, you know, it's that old that, you know, Nintendo couldn't justify um, charging a higher tier for it. Um, but, yeah, uh, on the Game Boy Advance side of things, um, once again, it's a complete mishmash. Oh, yeah, and um, Tetris was shown off for the Game Boy. Um, interestingly enough, it's the original Tetris and not Tetris DX. Yeah. Well, and also, no to... with it being on the regular um, um, uh, um, Nintendo Switch Online thing, you also still have the access to Tetris 99, so... Well, here's the thing. There's no additional cost here, so... Yeah, fair. I'm like, and so here's the good thing. Here's the really good thing is that online multiplayer is going to be a thing. So Nintendo is actually going to be able to recreate the link cable experience for these systems. You know, like you'll be able to play two player Tetris with this or a uh, four player Mario Kart Super Circuit. Mm-hmm. This was a problem with the Wii U eShop versions of these games. They were released with none of the, uh, none of the multiplayer functionality. In that. Right. Um, anyway, in terms of the Game Boy Advance, uh, we've got Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3. With the e-reader levels, this is important. Um, yeah, because that's like half a game worth of extra levels. Yeah, and more to the point, uh, the e-reader levels were never fully completed in North America or Europe. Um, and it's also um, they're they're the goddamn e-reader levels. You know how hard it is to preserve this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, um, 
WarriorWare Inc. Uh, Mega Micro Games. Uh, Kuru Kuru Kurin. That was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, apparently this is a game that is quite old. It's uh, big, and was big. never released in the U.S. before, but was released in Europe. Yeah, like it's basically their version of Irritating Stick. Mm-hmm. See, I've um, never heard of Irritating Stick, but I understand that the kind of puzzle that yeah, it's basically you play as a stick that rotates to the left and right, and you have to get it through a maze. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Nintendo didn't come up with that concept. In fact, um, there's a Japanese game show that has that idea. Maybe not spinning, but it's basically don't touch the electric sides. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's um, also been he, like a boardwalk game forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. So, Which is a good one. Yeah. And The Legend of Zelda Minish, The Minish Cat. Why you gotta and dangle that in front of me, Nintendo? God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well what, what I was gonna say is that they have come at this point very close to making me consider the expansion pass maybe worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in the coming soon column, uh, we got Metroid Fusion, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, and I would expect that to have the online multiplayer integration. Uh-huh. Uh, I guess Fire one Emblem. thing to note with the uh, um, online multiplayer, it is with Switch friends only. There's no, like, matchmaking lobbies. Yeah, which is, once again, that, that's how it worked back in the day, because it's uh, emulating the link cable. Well, like, for, um, like, if you want to do, like, random races in Mario Kart, you still you still need the people on your Switch friends list. And I know... Like, I don't like having a lot of random people on my Switch friends list, so... No, you don't. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity. And hey, look who got an Star- F-Zero game, guys! <laughs> um, I'm anyway, a monster. Yeah, uh, anyway, another game or games to look out for, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Specifically, if they're going to have that link uh, sharing functionality in pack. Ah, yeah, because those games did have a uh, shop that was accessible only if you were playing on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, it didn't have much in it. I think it was mostly just yeah, a couple of cosmetic things. But... There's a link not, aspect. Not that... Yeah. Um, oh, that too, yeah. The Though that can also be done single cart with, um, with passwords. With, so... with, yes, really obnoxious passwords, yes. I have a book somewhere I, with my whole password list. I should probably see if those work. Actually, on yeah. the other on the other coming coming soon thing, if they put in Golden Sun: The Lost Age, that will also be interesting because that <laughs> the full transfer password is obscenely long. They really wanted you to do that with a cable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like, and um, I bring this up because this is going to be important for whenever Nintendo releases Pokemon games. Um, oh, yes. If they do. They're going to do that. It, and I mean, not just spinoffs. Like, the only you know, thing is it depends how if they can make it so they can link into it with the way the Switch Online games are kind of cordoned off. No, like, yeah, that, that's real- what I'm thinking. Is I, I, doubt, I think if they were going to do that, they would somehow make them separate. Yeah, now the real magic is uh, going to make those things work with Pokemon Home. Yeah, that's what I mean. I I use Bank and Home interchangeable because they're basically the same thing, but yeah. Fair. Because, yeah, uh, for those of you who don't have a Switch, the uh, uh, NA, the Nintendo Online like Classic games are in their own separate app. So it yeah. may not be easy for them to be able to tie Pokemon Home into that, and they may have to make them their own separate application. Yeah. Anyway, also the fact that these are games that you only own as long as, or that you only have access to as long as you keep paying for the service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's still some more stuff here for the Nintendo Direct, but we got to wrap things up since it's almost eleven. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. You know. Um, Did we say Advance Wars Reboot Camp actually releasing now? 
Uh, we did not, but that is. It's actually releasing now. Yeah, that's happening in April. No. Um, we can we can probably talk about this more anyway. There were I actually took notes this time because I was trying to be good, but we are a little bit short <laughs> on time. So yeah, we can talk about this on MSP. I'm sure uh-huh. mm-hmm. because we don't have a guest for that. It's also um, been a even slow a- media news day as well. So it was until Disney announced their results. Oh today. right, yes, that we're going to be talking their, about their that. what? Their results. Their quarterly results came in. Um, there's a lot to talk about there, but we'll get to that on that show. Anyway, uh, coming up on the week ahead, um, there is no Friday show after all. Um, the guest in question got in contact with me and had to cancel due to busyness reasons. And, it, and um, also, the Sunday reviews are happening on Monday because Petty Fan has a Digimon card game tournament to attend to. Yep. So, anyway, uh, happening on the Monday game reviews, we will be reviewing California Games, Third Space, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and Hyper Dimension Neptunia, Sisters versus Sisters. So, look for that uh, coming in a few days. And until next time, I shall wish you good gaming.